Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today we are getting a tiny bit closer to finishing my entryway. I don't know why, but it's been taking me a little bit longer than I would like to finish the space. Even though it's such a small area in the house, it's the first thing that you see when you walk in. So I want to make sure that it looks beautiful. And one thing I really wanted to do in this space was to create my own light fixture. I actually have never done anything like this before. The only thing that I've made before is just DIYing a lamp, but that process was a lot more simple than what I'm trying to do today. I really want to challenge myself to recreate this light that I've seen on Anthropology. It is such a statement piece, it is super unique looking, and I think it will work in a variety of spaces, and I really think it's going to add some life into the entryway, so I am determined to make that today. And before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe down below if you haven't already, and let's get to DIYing. Okay, so I have my laptop out, and I'm going to go over over some of the details of this light. It is from Anthropology and it is $528. So it's definitely a pricey item, but I believe it might be handmade. Let me actually see. Yes, it is handmade. It is from France. It also comes in three different colors and I just think it is so beautiful. And whenever I look at a piece and I'm trying to dupe it, I like to kind of break it down into different parts. So right off the bat, I know that we're going to need some type of fabric material. It says that they use some type of canvas that they painted over. And then just looking at some of the photos, it looks like there is some gold wires, some tubing, and then obviously the light kit. And even the way that they attach it to the light, it looks like it's just basically wrapped around the wire coming down from the ceiling. So I think that is actually pretty simple and doable to recreate. Okay, so I just realized that the gold pull kit is sold separately, which is actually that light. So if you get this, this is only the petals. I totally did not realize that. So it is $528 for the petals. And then the light kit, which is sold separately, is $98. So already that is gonna be 600 something dollars. I'm gonna actually put it into my cart, get all of the totals so then I can break it down for you guys. Okay, so the subtotal is $626 for both the light as well as the petals, plus $64.17 for taxes. Luckily shipping is free because this is a pretty pricey item. And the grand total is $690.17. So I think for a handcrafted piece, yes, that makes sense. And generally lighting will be a little bit more expensive if you want something super high quality. But personally for a piece like this that looks very DIYable, I'm totally going to take that route and show you guys how much I spend total for this project. So over here, I already have all of my materials that I bought for this project. And I feel very confident that we're going to be able to recreate a light like this. And the first thing I'm gonna actually do is to create a template for those petal shapes. I'm going to hop on over to Canva, which is one of my favorite free apps for DIY and creating templates. And I'm going to search for like a teardrop or a raindrop type of shape. And I'm going to use that as our template. So here's our template all cut out and before I do anything I actually have the light base here and I want to make sure that this is going to be big enough. I actually found this on Facebook Marketplace, it was $20, but the original listing did say that this was on Amazon so I'll link it down below. But I basically was just looking for a brass or a gold light kit just to make sure that everything would look seamless together. So this one is nice because then you can cut it and adjust it. And also this definitely comes off so I will remove it and then I will probably use it for something else because you can totally DIY something else with this. So this is what it's going to look like once it's hung up. We'll definitely shorten this a lot and I basically just want to make sure that this is going to be big enough. I know that there's going to be a little bit of space in between here. I don't know. I think just from looking at this, it makes it look so much smaller. So I think I'm going to have to make this a little bit larger, probably by like two inches. And since my printer will not print that large, I think I'm just going to take this basic template and then just make it a little bit larger by drawing it on. 
Okay, so my template was not quite big enough, so I did end up using a larger bowl and I placed it right on top to trace it. And I kept the pointy part at the top for the petal shape and I think this just worked out a lot more better. It just felt a lot more proportional and also more substantial. After many iterations, I think that we have a winner. This one seems to be the perfect size. So I will put the measurement on the screen here so that you guys can create a similar one if you want to do this project as well. The original piece looks like it has a linen or a canvas material and I wanted to find something that was a little bit more stiff. That way when we glued it on, we didn't really have to worry about stretching it or putting it flat. So I did find this cross stitching fabric which has a really nice natural look to it. There's some heathering going on and you can definitely see the weaving. So that's something that I was really looking for. And it's also super stiff. So I think this is gonna be the perfect match for this project. And what I'm gonna do next is to take our template and then just cut out eight pieces of this. With my new template, I'm placing that onto the fabric and with some pencil, I'm going to trace it over to get the design. With some scissors, you can go ahead and just cut that out. And I basically ended up using two of these fabrics and it fit four petals and we'll need eight in total. of my pieces here I'm going to give them a quick iron because they definitely need it and I just realized that I've been using my iron way more for my DIY projects than my actual clothes so I feel like that's really saying something I'm really glad that I went with this cross stitch material because it is super flat and it's totally not unraveling or anything. The edges are really clean. So I don't think I need to do any more prep work on these, but if you are using a material that might need to have the edges kind of cleaned up, I would recommend using something like Mod Podge or even a fabric stiffener. That way it will retain its shape and you don't have to worry about any of those frayed edges, but this is good to go. So I'm going to set that aside for now. So next I got these brass tubes these are usually used for making ear planters or any other type of metal smithing crafts. I actually don't really know what these are used for. These have that beautiful brass gold color. They are hollow in the middle and these are going to be really great because we can cut them down. So I did buy a little pipe cutter here. I've never actually used one of these before, but I should be able to stick it in and then cut it exactly where we need it to be. Each one of these brass pipes is going to be two inches. And with my mini pipe cutter, I'm placing it in between the two little wheels and then lining it up with the blade. With that little knob on the side, we're going to turn it clockwise and this is going to tighten it so that the blade touches the pipe. To start cutting, you just wanna spin the cutter, but I also found that it was a little bit easier for me just to spin the pipe at first. This way, it just got it started and I was able to move it around easier. And as you continue to spin the cutter, you want to make sure that you tighten the knob each time. That way, it gets through the entire pipe. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, it worked! Ah, there we go, our little piece. I made eight of these and after cutting, the pipes are going to have a really sharp edge to them. So I'm using a sanding block just to smooth it out and this way they're easier to handle and also just look nicer. I'm using a 14 gauge brass wire to keep the shape of the petals and this is also what the original piece uses. So I'm basically looking at the photos and trying to replicate that. I'm using my hands just to bend it and follow along the shape of the petals. And although this wire is pretty easy to manipulate, it's still really strong since it's made out of brass. I did actually test out an aluminum wire, but that just was too weak. So I definitely would recommend brass for this project. 
So right when we get to the tip where the two ends meet, this is actually going to go inside that little pipe and that way we have our whole petal shape. And I do believe that this is how the original piece is constructed as well, but I think this looks really good, especially since the two brass tones match perfectly. And to keep it all in place, we're going to use some Gorilla Hot Glue. So I'm just going to add that along the edge of the fabric and then holding the wire down. Alternatively, you could use a super strong hold like an E6000 glue. You just wanna make sure that you tape it down and that it has a lot of time to dry. But if you do wanna use hot glue for this project, I would totally suggest that you just hold it down and make sure that the glue dries all the way so that it doesn't get any lifting. Okay, so our first petal is done and this is looking really good. So we're gonna go ahead and just repeat this whole process with the seven other petals. Oh my god, you guys, this turned out way better than I thought. I think it looks very legit. It is pretty sturdy. And to attach it to the actual light pendant, I'm just going to use a little bit more wire. So I made this little hook and we're just going to pop it into the top of the tube. So I attached it just like this so it'll go around the wire and that way it stays nice and secure and it'll look something like this. Oh what? my god, I think my plan is gonna work. It's getting pretty dark outside now so I will see you guys tomorrow to install the light. It's a new day and today we say goodbye to this light. I have been wanting to get rid of this ever since we moved in so I'm really happy to finally replace it. The first thing I'm gonna do is to make sure that the power is off and then to remove the light bulbs and the entire fixture. This light fixture did not have any screws on the side, so I just started turning the base to see if that would loosen anything up, and in most cases, I feel like you just have to turn a bunch of things counterclockwise and see if it's going to work, and luckily that did just the trick to remove this light fixture. I did it! Now I can undo the wires and also remove the existing plate on there, and the new fixture does come with a new plate, so that is going to fit the light perfectly. I'm gonna screw that in with the hardware provided and also match the wires and connect them all together. So this pendant is obviously very long, but we can easily shorten it. So if you untwist this little screw right here, you can go ahead and adjust it higher or lower. And I'm gonna put it up on the ceiling to see how high I need to put it, especially since my ceilings are eight feet. So I think this is gonna hang up pretty high. And once we get the height that we want, you can go ahead put it back up, screw this on. With the excess wire, we're just gonna wrap that up and then hide it within this plate. Okay, let's see. Woo, yay! After removing the cage, I started putting the petals onto the light, but I quickly realized this was not holding the shape and that's because the wire at the end was just too big. So I went ahead and just took them out and then tightened them up. I took this off and I basically just had to rewire this so that this would be closer to the edge, especially since this tapers and that way they actually stay leveled. So now I'm gonna go hang this up again and fingers crossed that it works. After making that adjustment, this was staying on so much better. And if I had a solid rod, I think that would work even better. So I may cover it up in the future to make it even more sturdy. And if you recreate this project, I definitely would recommend that. But for now, I think the cord seems to be holding up really well. I am totally obsessed with our new unique light fixture and with it in the entrance of our home, I think it makes quite the statement to walk into. And once you turn on the light, that's where the magic happens. The shadows on the ceiling are so dreamy. It casts on this beautiful flower pattern and I am totally loving how our DIY light pendant came out. In total, I spent just under $80 for this DIY project and I think it looks just as good as the $700 version. 
So you know how people say that lighting is the jewelry of a room? I totally feel like that's what this is. I am just so happy with how it turned out. It makes such a statement while still being airy and organic, and I am just loving how it's tying this whole space together. And after seeing it so much on Instagram, I can't believe that I have one of my own and that we DIY'd. I would love to hear your comments on this project in the comments below, and I hope this video inspires you to create something new and maybe even make your own light fixture. And if you do recreate this project, don't forget to share it with me over on Instagram and also give me a follow. I post on there every single day. And that's it for this video. More on this entryway coming up super soon. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!